Hi, I'm Rachel Beddingfield and in this film I'll be exploring the rage system in horses. It's part of a series of videos I've been producing looking at the work of neuroscientist Jak Panksepp and looking at the emotional systems that all mammals share. Um, these systems involve particular structures and chemistries in the brain um, and he's identified seven different emotional systems which are uniquely different from each other and those are the ones I'm looking at in this film. In this film I want to show you the, um, that horses are not naturally aggressive. There is a low level of aggression in wild horses. Um, and also that despite looking for a long time, scientists have not been able to identify an emotional system in the brain for dominance. So I'll be looking a little bit about what dominance is and about social dominance in horses. So what feeling does arousal of the rage system create? If animals' brains are stimulated with electrical impulses at the sites where the rage system operates, they will hiss and spit. And if it's done to humans, be it's painless, um, humans will report feelings of intense anger. Um, and they will be quite confused because they'll be looking for something to blame. It's an outwardly directed emotion. Now, if the animals are able to turn off the electrical stimulation, they will do so. Um, because it obviously feels unpleasant, they don't like the feeling of rage in their system and they will avoid returning to the place where the electrical stimulation took place if they can help it or they'll try to run away if they're put into that place again. So we know from these tests that rage aroused in the brain feels unpleasant. Rage system arousal can be caused by many things. Irritation caused by biting insects or other unpleasant skin irritation causes arousal of the rage system. As you watch this film, you'll see twitching skin, swishing tails and hind foot stamping. These behaviours are so deeply demonstrative of irritation that they've evolved into communication signs too. Horses understand when another horse swishes their tail or stamps their foot that they are feeling irritated and they can respond then by offering calming signals or moving away to avoid confrontation or standing their ground if they choose. Rage is also aroused in males when another male comes onto the scene. Here is a classic stallion chase from the wonderful films produced by Wild Horses of the Sandwash Basin. And I really recommend looking at their videos, they're brilliant. The aggression is directed outwards to the intruder and there is the characteristic flattened ears and head preparing for a bite attack. Other sources of arousing the rage system are frequent in domesticity. In this film of my horses, they have seen me put hay out and are demonstrating rage arousal at the gate. This arousal is due to three factors. Firstly, frustration from not getting expected rewards. Usually they have free access to the hay, but I shut the gate this time in order to make this film. So their expectations haven't been met and they're feeling frustration. Secondly, with the gate shut, their physical activity is being restricted and just the mere restriction of physical activity arouses rage. And thirdly, it's the simple prevention of access to rewards, the hay in this case. Now, the, you watch the grey Arab chasing the chestnut mare away from the side of the gate which opens and he wants to get first access to the hay reward. This behaviour is known as resource guarding and Panksepp believes it's a combination of the fear system because of anxiety about the availability of the reward and rage causing the competitive behaviour to secure the scarce resources for yourself. Now obviously this, this kind of competition for resources is rare amongst wild horses. Um, the grass is all around them, if one eats they all eat, if there's no grass nobody eats. Um, nor are there any physical restraints, they basically can go where they want to go on quite a wide open range. And there's very little frustration of expected rewards. The main one I can think of is an older foal where the mother won't let them suckle when they want to when they've begun the weaning process. But basically, most of the sources of frustration and rage that we create in domesticity don't exist for feral horses in the wild. Now, mares will resource guard their foals, as this mare does when an older foal wants to meet her new baby. You can see she warns him off and he responds with lovely calming gestures. He turns his head away and shows her that he's no threat. Eventually, she thinks he's safe enough to let the foals get on with exploring each other. It's really important that we understand about these calming gestures. It's very easy to see the aggressive behaviours, but easy to miss the responses which say, OK, I've got it, I'm not threatening. 
In connection training, we reward these gestures right from the start by feeding horses when they turn their heads away from the treats. And their behaviour then is exactly like this foal's. Stallions resource guard too. That's the main business of stallions, guarding the herd to keep them safe and to prevent the mares nipping out and mating with another stallion. Looking at these behaviours, you might think they relate to dominance, and of course there's an awful lot of talk about dominance hierarchies in the horse world, and whole training systems built on the notion of you being the leader in your herd of two, for example. But unfortunately for these theories, there's absolutely no good science to back them up. Firstly, no scientist has been able to find a dominant system as a discrete emotional system in the brain and they have been looking for well over 50 years. Now, intermale aggression is often perceived as dominance. And Pankcep has found that there are some brain areas which regulate intermale aggression which are shared with the rage system, but there are others which are not. And they don't exist in, in female brains or they're much less developed. Plus, intermale aggression is mediated by testosterone, and that's not part of the chemistry of rage. So one significant difference is that stimulation of aggression by increasing testosterone feels good to the males, and they will return for more. So the, these stallions that you see fighting are getting a high from this fight. But stimulation of the rage system, the pure aggression system, feels bad, and animals will avoid it. So Pankset believes that this kind of intermale aggression and social dominance is actually based on learning. It's a higher order in the brain and also involves other emotional systems like seeking, lust, fear and play as well as rage. The second reason we need to challenge the ideas of dominance in training based on apparent natural behaviour is that that simply isn't true. Every decent ethological study of wild horses has failed to demonstrate a dominance hierarchy. Relationships are not linear, where one horse is the boss and everyone else falls neatly into line. Relationships are complex, shifting, and horses on a range are more like a village or a stable social network, an extended family, cousins, and so on and so forth. Now, the purpose of social dominance is to prevent serious damaging fights. But fighting is much less anyway when animals know each other, they're familiar to each other, as horses on a range would be. So you look at these two stallions and they start off appearing quite aggressive but you see they don't hurt each other and the behaviour quickly becomes about postures and threats which are not followed with serious aggression. Actually stories of stallions fighting for mares are much overplayed. Males who keep true harems such as walruses or elks are always physically much bigger than the females and armed with horns and fighting teeth. Where males and females are very close in size you tend to get much more pair bonding and pair bonding for life. And horses appear to be in between these two extremes. And modern ethology is showing us that mares are much more in charge of who they mate and stay with than previous thinking taught us. In fact, horse herds on a range are made up of many small family bands. Mares tend to stay together for much of their lives. And stallions are related to the bachelor stallions in the satellite bands around them. Phillies tend to join bands as near to their natal bands as they can, so the whole herd in the range is like a village, a stable community. So theories around dominance hierarchies in horses are outmoded and oversimplistic, and absolutely do not form a reliable basis for a successful training programme. As I said earlier, domesticity can create a lot of rage arousal in horses. When you train with pressure, you also add fear to this. And you often see a combination of anxious and stubborn horses who then tip over into aggression when they've run out of options. They can't think how to get out of the bind and the situation they're in. But when you give food to horses, you also have to be careful about creating frustration and encouraging resource guarding. And this is one of the main risks with reward-based training. But it can happen just as much with daily handling. Now remember, social dominance we now know is a learnt behaviour. So horses learn to use aggression to get what they want quicker. So a very typical example of this would be horses who flatten their ears and, and uh, threaten to attack when somebody appears with a feed bucket. So what happens is the person drops the feed bucket quickly and gets out of their way. And that reinforces the behaviour. The horse learns, oh, that's good, that's how to get rid of them. And so you, you create a learned behaviour of aggression. Um, 
And so it's a pure condition behaviour and they're only doing it because it works for them. Now this had happened to this horse and here his owner is learning to change this behaviour with connection training. She changed his attitude around food by only offering to let him play the touch the target game when he got a bit softer. When he touches the target she clicks and he gets a food reward. This kind of training brings the seeking system into play in the brain. The horse is looking for an answer to the puzzle and that has been shown to inhibit the rage system. So you can see him getting progressively softer as the training proceeds. And this combination of teaching him that there's a better way to get the treats than being aggressive and stimulating the seeking system of the brain creates horses that are really calm and relaxed around food. And soon she will be able to go right in beside him with the feed bucket and he will uh, go to his target and wait until she gives him the signal to come and get his food. So as you can see, rage is a very complex emotional system. And but horses are pure, peaceable animals and pure aggression should rarely be seen, even in our domestic horses, if their lifestyle is working for them. We also now know that dominance is a learned behaviour, so it can be changed with teaching different behaviour. It's not an inherent emotional system hardwired into the brain. It's a higher order system than that, and so it's much uh, amenable to change. So I hope this film has helped you to see aggression in horses perhaps in a slightly different light. In my next film I'm going to be looking at the lust system, the final one of the seven of Panksepp's emotional systems, so I hope you can join me then. See you then.